the fifth first day. 72 hours remain. Hey everybody, it's the Mechmaster 14, and welcome back to more of The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, where we're getting repetitive messages from Tattle, telling us to go to the canyon, even though we've already been there for a long time. In this episode, you know, this is actually a re-recorded episode. Oh my god. I can't believe this. I re-recorded you know, I recorded this episode before, and I, it was kind of good. Then again, it was actually pretty awful. But what happened was that you know, I realized that my microphone wasn't fully plugged in. And because of that, the whole thing just didn't record any of my voice. So it sucked. Or maybe it would have been better, because I'm not sure if people actually like hearing my voice. But anyway, today, we're going to be heading back to Akana Canyon. More specifically, heading off the Stone Tower, like the, like the King of Akana Canyon you know, wired us to. So we're going to be doing this. And I'm going to let you listen to the music this time, because for some reason, when I told you guys that the music was really good in here, it actually, it actually cut out the audio for some reason, so I'll let you listen. I hope it was actually playing the music, otherwise that, that would be really embarrassing for me. And right now, we are going in the, the mouth of a person by walking up their tongue that is shielding their crotch. And we're going to enter Stone Tower! Not sure why they call what not sure why the, the map of this place was named Stone Tower instead of Akana Canyon. Not really sure about that, but hey, I'm not a game developer. As you can see, you could kind of briefly see it, but when we step on these switches, it causes those blocks to move. When we step off the switches, they move back. And I really like the music in this place. You can probably hear it very well over my voice, and I can see that the I, I can see that links. This sort of thing is actually clipping through his collar, but whatever. And you can... I really love the music here. And what, what we need to do in this place is we have to play... Not the Song of Soaring, we have to play the Elegy of Emptiness that we learned from Igo Stuikana a couple episodes ago. And that will create a heartless soldier that we need to use to weigh down these switches. Honestly, yeah, I'm not... This is kind of a strange mechanic and... Oh. Hi, Ben! That's a reference to Ben Drown, the 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 old creepypasta. Okay, I don't even know how old the Ben Drown creepypasta is. I actually kind of feel kind of old for mentioning that. Anyway, this is kind of an interesting mechanic. I I kind of like it, but then again, it's kind of weird to me. And by the way, I want to blow up this Venus because I know he will be trouble. Got some health and a slowed down frame right there for a couple seconds. And now this is a really interesting mechanic, but what makes it even better is that, you know, we actually can only leave one empty shell for each form. Which means we have to go into different forms and leave more empty shells you know, to weigh down these switches. It's a weird mechanic, but then again, I, I really do like it because it, it kind of puts, puts an interesting spin on how, on how we weigh down switches. We actually have to play a song. And this is the corpse of Darmani, right down to even having the battle scar. Kind of creepy, don't you think? And okay, I I am saying that I do like this mechanic, and I'll agree, it, it is an interesting mechanic, but it, it does get kind of tedious as you do it more and more, because every single time you have to press down one of these switches, you have to. You have to go into the mask menu, pull out a different mask, put it on, and then play the LG of Emptiness again with that mask. So yeah, I kind of have a love-hate relationship with this mechanic. It's interesting, and it puts an interesting spin on things, uh, but it gets so tedious so quickly. Not quite as tedious as some of the other mechanics in Zelda, like putting on the iron boots in the water temple, but it's pretty tedious. We can see that this is the corpse of Macau. Do a roll off these jumps because we really want to make them. 
Yeah, you really... When I say you really want to make these jumps, you really want to make those jumps. Because, as I said before, I, I actually had a failed recording of this episode because the audio didn't record. Well, at least my voice audio didn't record. Hmm. But what happened was that in the middle of the episode, you know, when I was actually getting close to the top of this place, you know, something knocked me down all the way to the bottomless pit and I had to reclimb the entire tower. So yeah. You really want to make these jumps, and I learned that the hard way. Like, the hardest possible way, kind of, hard way. And as you can probably imagine again, I'm going to blow up my face, but blow up this beam in the process. I actually think I took less damage from that, because the beam kind of canceled out the whole blast. Press down this switch. Play the LG of emptiness again. Yeah, this gets kind of. Th this actually gets really annoying. I'm gonna be honest. I know I said I know I said I like this mechanic, but it does get annoying. And ooh, a bomb! A little scared to go for it because I'm because I'm worried that I'm. Okay. There we go. I was worried was, I was gonna like fall down and have to do this entire climb over again, even after I just told myself and you guys to not fall. Anyway, we have to pull our Zora mask this time. And you're probably wondering why I'm not using the Deku mask. Well, that's because, if you remember from way back in the series, you'll know that uh, the Deku mask, the Deku Link isn't actually heavy enough to press down any switches, and the same thing goes for the the actual Deku statue. So it's kind of useless. It, it would have been better if they actually made special switches that 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 you that you could use the Deku mask on. But whatever. I'm actually kind of glad that they that they didn't include the Deku mask in this because it, it, this is already pretty annoying. Uh. Anyway... How am I not close enough? I'm totally close enough. Oh god. Fire keys! No! Thank you! Oh! I was so worried that the fire keys was going to shove me down again! Don't fall off. Alright, so we now have an owl statue back up here, and... As you can probably imagine, that way is the way to the temple. And before we end this video off, I am going to put on the Deku statue, and show and show what it's like... What, what is, I'm going to show what the Deku statue actually looks like. Because I know some people are going to be curious, then again, not a whole lot, but... I, I'm just going to show it. Listen to his amazing pipes. I actually do like the sound of the Deku pipes, too. Anyway, that is the Deku child. The probably diseased child of the Deku butler. But anyway, with that grim note, next time on The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, we're, be going, we're going to be heading into the next dungeon of the game to break the curse that was placed on Akana Canyon. See you guys next time. McMaster, out. <laughs>